Hey guys, in this episode, myself and Simon are going to be looking at the Shaltari Tarantula. We are. That's a new standard choice? It is, yes. We've begun introducing a new standard choice for the races that only had one. And in this case, this is the Tarantula. Yep. It's for the Shaltari, mm -hmm. and it goes alongside the Tomahawk in the standard slot. Right, so in this video, uh, Simon's going to give us our best practice on how to use it. Again, if you're interested in how to combat it with your... UCM, your PHR, and your Scourge, then why not jump into Backstage and watch the XLBS version of this episode where we're going to look at how to combat it. But Simon, what's the best practice for this guy? Right, well, the Tarantulas um, are a walker. Yeah. Where the Tomahawks are a skimmer. So the Tomahawks rely on speed to help them survive. The Tarantulas, they rely on uh, armor. They yeah. slightly more armor and more damage points. They're mm -hmm. slightly tougher to kill. How many damage points have they These have two. Two, okay. Uh, and while it doesn't sound like a lot, it means that suddenly if you hit them with an anti-tank weapon, yeah. you're going to need to do double damage to kill them in one go. Which so, ain't so easy. No, no. Mm -hmm. And especially is that these tomah the Tomahawks can be often be damaged on twos. Yeah. These might be damaged on threes. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't sound like a big difference, but to actually kill them outright, that means you've got to roll a five or a six. Right. So okay. there's a little bit of extra survivability in there. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, we aren't taking into account the fact they've got a passive countermeasure save. Yeah. Which, for those of you that don't know Drop Zone, is basically a five person vulnerable save. Perfect. Okay. They've got some pretty nasty weaponry as well. That's what makes these guys pretty tasty. Right. Okay. They've got two weapons. So the Tomahawk has one long ranged anti tank weapon. Yeah. The Tarantula have a short ranged. Um, gravity weapon yeah. that take, depends upon the target's armor and damage points. Uh -huh. And the bigger they are, the easier they are to crush. Really? So they are excel at killing bigger things. Oh, and nice. And on top of that, they've got a little laser as well. Yeah. So in this, in this particular sort of example here, they've got their main guns, mm -hmm. which they can target at the Scourge Hunters there. Yep. And they can destroy those. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they've got their little laser pods, which are underneath. Yep. And they can be used to target the prowlers. In the same turn? In the same turn. So they can fire both guns at once at different targets. So suddenly they're, they're much more um, toolbox, much more utilitarian. They can do lots of things. Yeah. And, uh, and the lasers, because they're a laser, in drop zone, we have a countermeasures mechanic, uh -huh. which reduces the range of some weapons. Yes. Those lasers have an infinite range countered. Which means that no matter where your opponents are on the board, as long as you can see them, yeah. you can shoot them. Oh, that's Regardless awesome. Of range. Oh, that is awesome. So right. If, yeah, so if these little prowlers were right off at the back of the table, yeah. they could fire their main guns at these hunters still. And still have and a still go at the prowlers. prowlers. As long as they could see them. Yeah. The only difference is that they have the coaxial rule. Mm -hmm. Means they have both weapons have to target enemies in the same arc. So right. they can't fire the main gun forwards and the laser sideways. Mm -hmm. they, can fire, they can fire them both sideways or both forwards. Okay. At different targets, as long as they're both mm -hmm. in the same arc. So uh, what you would do is you would, is it a 90 degree arc? 90 degree arc, yeah. So you would work out your 90 degrees and so long as they're within that kind of 90 degree arc, yeah. then you can quite happily target away at them. Um, this big weapon. Yes. Okay, this sounds awesome to me. It is pretty cool. Now, uh, well, with the laser, uh, that suggests to me that you don't need to go uh, plowing ahead with these guys. You don't need to be chucking them into danger or anything like that. You can wait for your opportunity. You can and get them in there. They'll quite happily go through all the jump gates and everything else. Oh, yes. So yep. From a deployment point of view, they're just as... Exactly the same as every other Shaltara unit out there. Okay. I've got to know, though. They, they, these guys, that that big weapon that uses the gravity of the... Oh, the of, mass of the target yeah. and gravity to crush it. What about buildings? They're pretty good at buildings as well because they've got lots of damage points. Yeah. So they're damaging those on twos, uh -huh. which means that they've got a laser that can hurt the buildings. And the gravity of the gun that can hurt the buildings. So yeah. between them, they can they can put some serious hurt on buildings. And is it the bigger the building, the more hurt it can put on it? Um, it's generally a case of it's going to be wounding on a two regardless. Yeah. But that's pretty good. Yeah. And it's helpful for the Shaltari to keep pumping out more shots into buildings. Mm -hmm. Now, I have another unit here that you I'd do. like to, to drop in. This is a big bad boy. I'm wondering what they can do to that. <sighs> Well, one of the things the Shaltari lack as a race is they don't have many high-powered weapons. Yeah. The Tarantula changes all that because the gravity gun, although it doesn't have an energy value like most weapons in Drop Zone, it uses mm -hmm. a chart. So you cross-reference, 
the damage points the target has, the armor they have, yep. and that tells you the dice roll you need to damage them. Mm -hmm. So against um, battle tanks, they'll damage on the same as a, uh, a tomahawk, yeah. generally around the four or five mark. Mm -hmm. But against a big boy like this, they'll be damaging on twos. Because <sighs> it's got so many damage points, Yeah, they rip that thing apart. So suddenly, these two weapons, the lasers can shoot the, the smaller stuff as well, mm -hmm. but the big weapons hit the hits on twos, damage on twos, and then you fours or more, you double damage. So suddenly, so, two of them can do four damage in one turn to a Hades, half its damage points. Yeah. What? How many of them are we finding in the meta? You know, how many of them do we think people are going to field or take? Well, they're fairly new. They're mm -hmm. pretty new units. Um, but that said. We're seeing two to four of them. Yeah. They come in squad size two, four, or six. Yeah. And generally, you're seeing two or four of them put together. Six in larger games, but in a standard sort of tournament size game, two to four of them. Four of them would be pretty devastating. They are. They you are. Know, four of them could potentially kill that guy outright. Oh, in, in, in one volley, if, they get, if you get reasonable rolls, yes. Yeah. Um, and obviously, what you want to do is generally hide them or protect them as best you can, mm -hmm. come around the corner and ambush something that can't really escape. Awesome. Uh, that sounds like it. That's it for the, the tarantulas, guys. If you're interested in finding out how to counter them and how to combat these bad boys, why not come on over to beastofwar.com, hop into the XLBS version of this show, uh, where I'm going to be probing Simon's brain to work out how guys of massive girth <laughs> can counter this. Um, we'll hopefully see you over there. UCM then, I'm stuck with a lot of tanks. Um, I'm thinking my big heavy tanks against these guys, because again, that range thing, if I can hit him before he hits me, it sounds like the way to exactly. go. Exactly. I mean, I mean, here we've got some Gladius, but to be honest, Sabres would work just as well. Yeah. In fact, Sabres, in some cases, are actually better, 